This mountain goat is a high altitude killer. He doesn't headbutt, he stabs with 12 inch stiletto horns. Mountain goats are so beautiful that they almost don't look real. And if you told someone about the things they can do without video proof, they would tell you that you're crazy. But even though gravity doesn't seem to work for them, they are very much real. From how their feet are designed so they can climb like no other animal on Earth, to the most bizarre reason you can imagine that has made them persona non grata at a national park, here are 20 facts you probably didn't know about mountain goats. Number 20. How Mountain Goats Ascend Nearly Vertical Cliffs let me introduce you to the magical climbing mechanics of these extraordinary mountaineers. Yes, I'm talking about mountain goats. They are so insanely good at climbing, in fact, that no predator can catch mountain goats. I mean, look at them. They are literally climbing on nearly vertical cliffs. They do it with such ease, like moved ballerinas dancing in the most precipitous of slopes. How on earth do they do that? Well, for starters, their hooves have a hard exterior that allows them to dig into ledges that are virtually invisible to the naked eye, but they also have soft pads on the bottom of their handy little hooves that can mold to contours in the cliff's surface just like the fanciest of climbing shoes. And even though their bodies seem thick and sometimes even chubby, these little expert climbers are actually very slender when you look at them head on. Basically, they're shaped perfectly well to be able to balance themselves on extremely narrow protrusions. Neat, huh? They also have another cool trick up their sleeves, or rather, their legs. Mountain goats appear to strategically keep their elbows very close to their body's center of mass. This is important because while they are climbing and they extend their elbow, they propel their bodies straight upwards instead of rotating their torso. Basically, these guys are the perfect design to climb the most impossible slopes. Oh, and make sure to subscribe and like the video or you'll dream of falling from these vertiginous cliffs every single night. Number 19. Mountain goats are actually not goats. Wait, what? How can goats not be goats? And yet, it's true. Humans have an annoying tendency of naming animals based on other species that kinda look like them, instead of classifying them correctly through their biology. A few examples of this are koala bears, not bears, seahorses, definitely not horses, and yes, mountain goats. They have woolly coats, horns, and cloven feet. How could they not be goats, right? Well, you see, mountain goats are not classified as true goats at all. The main difference between the two species is evident, their habitat. They all live in the highest peaks of the highest mountains. At least we got one half of their name right. Basically, they live in such high altitudes, they've evolved a thicker, shaggier fur to protect them from the elements. In the previous topic, we covered how anatomically adapted their hooves are, and to top it all off, mountain goats' horns are what separate them genetically from true goats. Have you noticed that they're far smaller than those of their domesticated counterparts? But that's because during mating season, male mountain goats don't fight other males to win the females. I mean, they do, but not nearly as aggressively as ordinary goats. Therefore, the need for massive, strong horns is simply not there. As you can see, there are too many differences to make them part of the same species. Number 18. Head to the skies if you'd like to see one. These fluffy creatures live in alpine and subalpine environments, always high in altitudes, sometimes above 13,000 feet. Yes, it is extremely dangerous up there. One false move and you're toast. 
but with hooves sculpted by millennia of relentless evolution, these agile climbers of the precipice ascend the vertiginous slopes with the ease of an acrobat. Yet the allure of high altitudes extends beyond mere acrobatics. Think about it, why would an animal species choose the most unforgiving and dangerous terrain to live in? Well, exactly for that very same reason. Mountain goats have evolved to come and go in the treacherous cliffs, but no other species has, especially no other species that preys on them. Basically, by staying in the slopes, the mountain goats have figured out the perfect defense against predators. You can't eat them if you can't catch them. Genius, right? For that reason, there are still lots of mysteries about this magnificent animal because it's so darn difficult to study an animal that lives in a place where you can't go. They don't stay perched in their ivory tower all the time, though. In the summer, they stay above the tree line, but during the winter, they migrate to lower elevations where there are still some plants for them to eat. Number 17. Where do mountain goats live? Two words, North America. Okay, three words, Northwestern North America. That's the only place on the globe where you'll find these whimsical looking mountain creatures. Nowhere else in the world are they lucky enough to call themselves the home of the mountain goat. This species range is restricted to the steep and broken mountain ranges. You can find them bouncing on the rocks from the Northern Cascade and Rocky Mountains to South Central Alaska. In Alaska, they live throughout the southeast panhandle, and their range continues north and west all along the coastal mountains to Cook Inlet. In south-central Alaska, they are usually only found in the Chugach and Wrangell Mountains. However, small groups have been seen in the Takitna Mountains. They've also been introduced to the mountain ranges on Kodiak and Baranoff Islands, where they seem to be doing very well. On the other hand, when they tried it on Chichov Island, the project failed miserably. Number 16. Interesting nomenclature all around. Okay, first things first, what the heck is nomenclature? Well, it's basically a system for giving names to things within a particular field. For example, you may have heard of binomial nomenclature in biology class at school. It's the name for a specific way of referring to living things by two different names, like calling humans homo sapiens, for instance. You may already know that baby mountain goats are called kids and males are called billies. But do you know what a female's called? Take a guess. Time's up. A female is called a nanny. Both genders look quite similar, except for one big difference. Size. Billies are usually larger than females and also stockier. Both of these attributes come in handy when they have to compete for females during mating season, which is from early November to December. After the gestation period, when spring comes, nannies give birth to one or two kids. Number 15. Kids have to get the hang of it pretty quickly. Human babies have it easy. We have mommy and daddy to cater to our every need. We have clothes, shelter, baby food, doctors, and oh, so many toys. But when you're a kid mountain goat, things are a little more wild. After a day or so of being born, kid mountain goats are already scrambling around rocks and climbing steep slopes with their mothers. Their very first baby footsteps are at the edge of a staggering cliff. That would compare to a month-old human baby doing gymnastic tricks to perfection. They even have to cross over treacherous rapids sometimes, and they are only a few weeks old, if that. They first have to watch their parents cross the freezing waters. They take note on how to cautiously navigate the roaring stream. If the kids don't manage to replicate the right movements, they might get taken away by the current, never to be seen again. They have to have to get it right the first try. It is literally a matter of life and death. One of the young kids is seemingly hesitant. It all seems too much for such a tiny little baby. 
At first, it retreats in fear, but then it manages to gather its courage, and there it goes. That was a pretty impressive jump for such a young creature. Number 14. The Secret is in the Horns We heard all about the mountain goat's hooves, but what about the horns? Well, as it turns out, the horns are also one of the unique characteristics of this species. Unlike ordinary goats, the mountain goat's horns are slender and pointed. They extend upwards from the animal's head and are slightly curved. One curious fact about these little horns is that they never stop growing. Ever. Well, for as long as the goat lives, anyway, which is still pretty cool. But, and this is a big but, the horn's growth is very, very slow. In fact, the older a mountain goat gets, the slower the horns will grow. Therefore, the horns grow the fastest when the goats are juveniles. Also, they don't shed their horns, as opposed to elk, moose, or deer antlers, for example. They use their horns for one main reason. This goes for both males and females, and that is for protection from predators. They are also useful during the occasional fight amongst themselves. The length of the horn for billies is about 12 inches, while Nanny's horns are a little smaller, reaching up to 9 inches long. Number 13. What do they look like? Honestly, they look like a fairy tale creature, maybe something out of a Tolkien novel, whimsical and mysterious, yet hardy and powerful. They are large mammals and are covered by a long, creamy, and lush coat to keep them nice and warm during the harsh winter months. In fact, it's no coincidence that they're white. That way, they can go unnoticed in the snow. It's their mountain goat camo, if you will. When spring arrives, they shed the thick fur by jumping up and down like crazy, which is very fun to watch. They may also rub against trees. That also works. But the most badass feature of these creatures is the fact that they have black lips, nostrils, hooves, and horns. In contrast with their white fur, it's quite a sight. Adult males have a beard that grows up to 5 inches long. Number 12. The Mountain Goat is the only living species in its genus. When an animal is the only living species in its genus, it means that within the broader classification of life, the animal is unique in its immediate group, which means that there are no other currently existing organisms that share the same genus with it. In other words, it is the only living representative of its immediate evolutionary branch. This can indicate that the species has evolved along a distinct path leading to its isolation within its genus. For example, us Homo sapiens belong to the family of the great apes or hominids, which we share with the gorilla, the chimpanzee, the bonobo, and the orangutan. But we are the only living species of our genus, Homo, because we clearly evolved in a very different way than the other great apes. The same thing happened with the mountain goats. Now, don't get me wrong, mountain goats are distantly related to ordinary goats. But funnily enough, they are more closely related to antelopes, tuckens, and chamois. They are the only living species in the genus Oriamnos. The name Oriamnos is derived from the Greek term oros, meaning mountain, and the word amnos, which translates to lamb. There's an alternative interpretation of the first half of the world. Oreus means mountain nymph. See, I told you mountain goats are like something out of a fantasy novel. Number 11. What do mountain goats eat? Mountain goats are herbivores. Yeah, that means they are vegan, just like your friend Stephanie. They eat a diet that consists mostly of mosses, lichen, grasses, herbs, sedges, bark, and twigs. They are classified as ruminants, which includes giraffes, okapis, deer, cattle, antelopes, sheep, and goats. Ruminants acquire nutrients from the plants they eat by fermenting it in their stomach before they digest it through microbial action. They make their own kimchi in their stomach, kind of. 
For that sophisticated and complex process, most members of the ruminant family have a four-chambered stomach and also two-toed feet, but that's pretty random. The first two chambers of the stomach are like large fermentation vats where microbes break down the hard cellulose into smaller, more malleable carbohydrates. After that, the goats will regurgitate that tasty, half-digested concoction and chew on it a bit more with their cheek. Teeth, which are perfectly well designed for just this purpose. This way, they can break down the tougher matter that the microbes couldn't break down. Then, it's time to swallow the whole thing again and continue the process. Digestion for them is a long and difficult affair, and their stomach works non-stop. It takes them about 11 to 15 hours to fully digest their food. I feel bloated just thinking about it. Number 10. You can tell the age of a mountain goat by counting the rings on its horns. Yep, just like you can tell a tree's age by its rings, you can also tell a mountain goat's age by the rings on their horns. But only when they're older than 22 months, though. This is possible because their horns are not shed. They have the same pair of horns their whole life. And each year, the horns grow a little bit more, creating a visible ring called an annulus at the base of the horns. This way, if you count all the annulus, analyze, and add one to one and a half years, which is the age when the first annulus is formed, then bingo, you have the mountain goat's age. Before they reach that important stage in life, the kids have only one inch long buttons during their first fall. But once the horns start growing, they grow fast. In fact, by the time they reach the yearling age class, most mountain goats have attained over half of their horn length already. Impressive, isn't it? Number 9. They weigh 100 to 300 pounds. I don't know if you've noticed, but nannies and billies look, well, pretty similar, don't they? In fact, they look almost exactly the same, except for one difference, their size. As a general rule, females are about 15% smaller than males, like in most mammal species. Billies weigh an average of about 150 pounds, but may weigh up to 300 pounds, whereas nannies average about 125 pounds and can reach a maximum weight of 250 pounds. From a distance, the difference in size can be quite subtle. Also, an adult female and a two-year-old male look exactly the same and show no difference in size whatsoever. But if you really want to differentiate between males and females, you should look for other clues. The main indicator of gender in adults is the beard. Males have a long, full beard, while females' beards are smaller and harder to spot from a distance. A one-year-old mountain goat, male or female, normally weighs about 60 to 70 pounds and stands at about 27 inches at the shoulder. Kids are always the easiest to recognize because of their little size and overall cuteness. They stand at 20 inches at the shoulder and weigh only about 35 pounds. Number 8. A mountain goat's white coat has a double layer. Like for most animals that live in very cold and windy climates, their fur is not just for show. It is a crucial survival tool, and without it, they would simply perish. That's why their fur is so bulky and thick, and there's more to it than meets the eye. Mountain goats are among the North American continent's most cold-adapted species. They've survived for a very long time and in some of the most unforgiving habitats you can imagine. They couldn't have done it if they didn't have the proper mountain gear. And unlike us humans that have to go buy our warm and waterproof coats, the mountain goats grow their own. And it's probably a lot better quality than anything you'll find in any high-end shop that protects them perfectly well from all the elements. So how does it work? Well, it has two layers. The layer close to their bodies is like the soft wool of a sheep. It's soft, warm, and thick. It provides a base layer of insulation so the animal's own body heat can't escape. Think of it like being under a very warm duvet during a cold winter night. 
The second layer has long, thick hairs, which are called guard hairs, and they cover over the woolly fur. Guard hairs' job, as their name suggests, is to protect the animal's body from wind, rain, and snow. The design works so well that these creatures don't even have to think about the cold. It doesn't bother them. The thing is, though, when spring comes and the sun shines stronger, that super thick and cold adapted fur becomes a liability. For starters, it gets stuck everywhere and the animal would suffer from a heat stroke. The solution is quite simple. They shed it. They jump around and rub against trees and bushes, leaving behind big chunks of fluffy balls of fur. Just like putting away your winter coat and taking out your light jean jacket. Number 7. Females live in bands or herds with kids. Males live in groups of two to three. After mating season's over, usually around the month of December, nannies and billies go their separate ways until the next mating season. At that point, billies leave, often alone or with two or three other adult males. On the other hand, nannies form large nursery groups. Sometimes, these herds can reach up to 50 individuals. Although these groups are rather loose-knit, they all have their babies together and take care of each other. After six months of pregnancy, the adorable little babies are born during springtime, from late May to early June. The moms usually give birth to a single baby. For security reasons, they often go through the birthing process in an isolated ledge far away from predators. After that, they will lick their kids dry and eat the placenta, just like Tom Cruise. And within mere hours, the adorable little kids are already running and jumping around in the rocks. The kids will stay close to their mothers for the first year of their life, or until the mom gives birth again to a new sibling. For a mountain goat mother to protect their kids, she has to lead them away from danger. You will often see them positioning themselves below their young ones on steep cliffs to stop potential free falls. And they will not hesitate one second to stand over their babies when a predator is lurking in the vicinity. Number 6. Substance and Sport Hunting Mountain goats have been hunted in Alaska for thousands of years. Alaska natives use their meat for sustenance, their precious hides to make winter clothes with, and also for ceremonial purposes. Even in modern days, in some rural communities, they still rely on the mountain goat as a crucial source of food, especially in the most remote places where there aren't any other animals to hunt, like deer, caribou, or moose. It's important to note that even though these communities have hunted mountain goats for thousands of years, they never put in danger the survival of the species. They never overhunted or did it with greed. It has always been for survival. Sadly, mountain goats are also highly prized by sport hunters. There are qualified guides that'll go on a one-in-a-lifetime journey with the clients to hunt mountain goats. I say sadly because while Alaska natives hunt for tradition and survival, sport hunters do it for fun. It's an important designation. Hunting these highly adapted animals is no easy task, and it asks for a very high degree of concentration, dedication, bravery, and most of all, preparation. Not everybody can do it, and that's why people that are good at it are very highly regarded in their communities. Number 5. Mountain Goat Wool We've covered earlier in this video about how special the mountain goat's wool is, with its two layers to protect it from the bitter cold of the mountains they call home. As you can imagine, their wool is top-notch quality, and for the Alaska natives, it is precious for that very reason. For many centuries, they have traditionally used the horns, hide, and other parts of these animals to produce incredible works of art with a deeply rooted cultural significance. To produce a chill cat or a raven's tail blankets, for example, there is a very intricate and long process. First, they either harvest the hide in the spring or gather shed wool during the early summer season. They carefully separate the hair from the wool, and then they thoroughly process it, and in some cases, the hair is dyed with cedar bark and other plant materials. 
After that, the hair has to be woven on looms in intricate and difficult designs. This is not an easy task, not by a long shot. It calls for extraordinary skill and traditional knowledge. In fact, the work is so complex and meticulous that only a very small group of people can do it, and their talent is sometimes recognized all over the world. If you find yourself hiking in mountain goat territory and find their shed coat, you can donate it to local weavers. They will be forever grateful. The horns are also made into ceremonial spoons and decorated with intricate and complex designs. Number 4. Mountain Goat Predators Even though mountain goats have adapted exceptionally well to climb the steepest slopes to avoid predators, they still do get preyed upon by certain animals. They can't stay in the cliffs forever. They need to feed, mate, raise the kids. All that has to be done in more, let's say, horizontal terrain. Wolves, wolverines, and bears attack them from the ground while eagles attack them from above. All these predators usually go for young kids, normally younger than a year old. But the creature that is perhaps their primary predator is the mountain lion or cougar. These big cats are powerful enough to completely overpower a large adult mountain goat, and at the same time, they have the unique feline nimbleness that allows them to navigate the difficult rocky ecosystem of the steep slopes. As we mentioned before, instead of protecting themselves with strength, poison, or speed like other animals, the mountain goat's main form of defense is to climb on steep, rocky slopes that no other animal can navigate. Not even eagles, who have the huge advantage of flying, can easily get to the kids, because their mothers are always close behind to catch them if they get knocked off their feet. In fact, most of this species' behavior is based around avoiding predators, and as a result, avalanches and gravity itself kills more mountain goats than any predator. Number 3. There are approximately 100,000 mountain goats in North America. Did you know that during the last ice age that ended some 10,000 years ago, most of British Columbia was under 5,000 feet of ice? Well, it's true. And for the mountain goats, which were already inhabiting the area, this was a time to adapt, something they do extremely well. Scientists have found evidence that they took refuge on top of the mountains and the new islands that remained ice-free. Of course, since then, they've managed to repopulate much of their once larger territory, but they liked it so much up in the mountains that they decided to make it their forever home. Their numbers have fluctuated over time, but today the species is going pretty strong with an impressive total number estimated at between 80,000 and 110,000. And over half the individuals found in the whole world, so around 50,000 mountain goats, live in British Columbia, specifically on the Terrace Smithers area. Interestingly, most herds are completely isolated from the other herds. They may not even think that other herds exist. This is possible because even though you can only find this species in one area of North America, this area is massive, for lack of a better word. It's been estimated that there are 2,500 herds in British Columbia alone. The calculated average land area for each herd is about 94 square miles. That's a lot of terrain to roam around. Number 2. Mountain Goats Are Being Airlifted Out of a National Park Park. I bet you're wondering, how, why would they go through all the trouble to airlift mountain goats out of an area where they're not in any danger? Go on, take a wild guess. You will never, ever guess it. Okay, ready? It's because they crave human urine. Yep, that's right. These whimsical and majestic creatures go bananas for our pee. Can't get enough of it. Crazy, huh? And it's not just a few. We're talking hundreds of mountain goats are being airlifted out of Olympic National Park in Washington State. Apparently, they've become a nuisance due to their insatiable thirst for human urine. Why do they like our pee so much, you ask? Well, because of the salts and minerals in it, of course. They won't say no to a t-shirt drenched in sweat, either. 
the authorities decided that the only solution was to shoot them with tranquilizer darts and net guns and literally fly them away. The mountain goats were blindfolded, put into bespoke slings, and taken to another area in the North Cascades. There are between 275 and 325 goats that can't be caught. Sadly, these unfortunate ones will be shot and killed, artificially introduced by human beings in that area over a century ago. Number 1. Watch out, mountain goats can be aggressive. Yes, they are cute, and yes, they are friend-shaped, but also, yes, they are wild animals. So, no touchy. Jokes aside, you should never approach a wild animal, no matter how huggable they look. Like any wild creature, mountain goats don't like it when people invade their personal space. Let's not forget, either, that these animals are mammals, which often means that the mothers are highly protective and reactive when it comes to their young. And the nannies are no exception. They will become hostile towards humans if they think they are a threat to their babies. Being a mammal also means one more thing, that during mating season, males' brains are running on pure testosterone. We all know what that means, aggressive and reckless behavior. They often fight amongst males to impress the ladies, but there have been cases where they also turn hostile to humans. And you know, they do have very muscular bodies and sharp horns on their heads, so try to stay clear of mountain goats. As you can see, mountain goats are incredibly fascinating creatures. Have you ever seen one in real life? How was that experience? Tell us about it. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.